Hi, welcome back to McClutchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClutchy and today I'm going to be talking to you about residual values. And this is our 10th video in our series on bivariate data analysis aimed at Year 12 students right across Australia. In this video, our focus is going to be on finding out what a residual plot is and why we need one, what a residual is, how to interpret it, how to calculate a residual value, how to then use that information to draw a residual plot, interpret that, and then we're going to do a worked example with all the new information that we've acquired. So firstly, you might be wondering, what is a residual plot and why would I need to draw one? Well, let's consider scatter plots. We've been doing those since grade 10. And we've always been describing those in three ways, in terms of our form, direction, and strength. So in this particular example, we would say that this was a strong negative linear association. However, sometimes if we extrapolate our information beyond the information we've been given, it might be part of a bigger picture that's not linear at all. For example, in this case, we've got part of a parabola. So we need a way that we can determine whether our least squared regression line is appropriate to use for a linear model or not. So that's where we're heading towards. Now let's talk about what a residual is first. And this will lead us to how to draw that residual plot to determine if our model is linear or not. So firstly, the definition of a residual is the vertical distance, the up and down distance, between our least squared regression line and the dots on our scatter plot. So here's an example of a scatter plot. Remember, we draw the scatter plot first, then we use our either our technology or we develop algebraically our mathematical model being our least squared regression line, and it falls in between all of our dots. So that vertical distance is shown in red between every dot. These are the real life happenings of the data that we've collected versus our model, which is shown by the line passing between them. Now, as we can see that there's going to be differences between what happens in real life and what a model is going to be predicting. We see that with the weather all the time. And that model is our prediction tool, and it's different to what the dots actually, um, what actually occurred in real life. Now, these residuals that fall above the line are called positive residuals, and it stands to reason that ones below the line are going to be called negative residuals. We can interpret these in different ways. They mean different things. So let's talk about what they actually mean. When we've got a positive residual, what that means is that our real-life event or outcome, the data we actually collected, is going to be higher than what our model would predict. In other words, a positive residual means that our model is going to underestimate when we use interpolation. On the flip side of that, when we have a negative residual, that means that our real life event, the data we actually collected, ended up being lower than what our model's predicting. And that further means that our negative residual is meaning that our model is overestimating using interpolation. So that's how we interpret the residual values. If you're ever asked about interpreting a residual value in an exam, and you should be doing that in your assignment as well, then we're talking about how our model estimates and what the actual result is in comparison. We have a formula to calculate our residual values. Residual values equal to the actual y value, that's what actually was measured, less or the difference between that and the predicted y values. So that's an important formula. You won't find that on a formula sheet. You just need to remember that one. Now let's have a little look at this graph here. We've got a point, x was equal to 14 in the graph shown below. Now, when that was done in real life, that data was taken, the actual corresponding value for the y-axis was 82. Now, if we use the graph to calculate the residual or the difference between the two, we can see that what actually happened in real life was that our y-value was 88. That's our predicted value. So we're going to calculate now the difference between the two. The residual was equal to the actual, being 82, take away what actually was on the line as a prediction, 88. And the difference is negative 6, a residual value, which is a negative residual value. And that means that our model in this case overestimated the value. Now, we're going to create a residual plot graph. And what this does is it takes that residual calculation for every single point on our scatter plot. So you want to hope there's not too many. Otherwise, you're going to be repeating that calculation for every one of those points. So step one is you're going to use your formula to calculate the residual. You're going to plot those um, differences on your y-axis against your original x value. So we can see there that we've got some positive differences and some negative differences, some above and below the x-axis. And our x-axis simply represents those original values. And then we're going to draw a conclusion. So let's have a quick chat about 
what conclusions we could draw from this residual plot, for example. Well, if we see a random pattern occurring, that means our original model, that least squared regression line equation, is an appropriate linear model for our data. If, for example, though, we didn't see a random pattern, then it would not be appropriate. Now this is going to be a very powerful analysis tool for you if you are evaluating reasonableness of your results. So if you're thinking about your problem solving modeling task or a maths assignment, they're going to ask you to evaluate your reasonableness of your results as part of your grade. Now if you've got strong correlation calculated using R and you've got a residual plot that's confirming that your model was definitely linear, then what you could say is that your model is useful for making interpolation style predictions. And that's going to be meaning that your results are very reasonable. However, if you found for through your residual plot that you've actually got a nonlinear model, you'd be able to say that your equation of your line is not reasonable. That's a bit of a clue there for your future assignments. Now, if we've got a situation here where we've got a very clear pattern, if I got a pencil out I could join those dots and I would end up with a parabola. That's indicative to me that I have a non-linear relationship so not suitable as a linear model. Okay it's time to do a worked example now and we used our worked example in our previous video when we were finding the least squared regression equation on the calculator using Andrew's lawn mowing business. Well Andrew's gathered some more data and he's developed an equation y equals 0.1 1x plus 18 approximately and we've been asked now to use that information to draw a residual plot and decide if the association is linear or not. So my very first step is going to be to use the equation Andrew's developed to predict every y value. Now I'm going to start with x is equal to 540 and the reason I've chosen to start there is because when I substituted x equals 480 the equation actually predicted exactly the same value as the actual value and that's because that point's actually on the line. So it wasn't a very good one to use as an example. So we're going to use x equals 540 to kick off with. If I substitute that into Andrew's equation and work that out, the prediction is going to be 76.5 minutes. So now I need to repeat that process for all of my other values. And you can see I've done this now right across and I've added a new row to the table and I've rounded everything off to zero decimal places. So that 76.5 becomes 77 minutes. Okay, so that's the first step in my process, predicting using the equation. The second step is to predict and calculate the residual value. So with x equals 540, using my formula, substituting then the actual value being 90, take away the predicted value of 77, I get a residual value of 13. And I'm going to repeat that process right across my table for all of those different values. So now I've got residuals that I've calculated using that very simple formula, finding the difference between the two. Now it's time to graph. Now remember when we did the graphing that the original x values, which is up the top, the area in the blue row there, that goes along the x-axis. And it's this last row here on the residuals, they go on the y-axis. Now if I was to do this in Microsoft Excel, I would simply highlight the area column and the residual column as two separate things using my control button. And then I'd click on the scatter plot and it would automatically plot one verse against the other. So you just wouldn't make sure that you would definitely not want to put the two middle rows in though, because that would muck up your residual plot because we're only graphing the area against the residuals. So I've done this for you here now. You can see on the x-axis, I've got my area of my lawn and on the y are those residuals that I calculated in my table. We've got some up above the x-axis and some below. Now it's time to interpret the relationship based on the information we've got. That's our fourth step. Well, our residual plot here shows that the model is quite random. There's a random pattern. I couldn't join the dots and actually form anything that looked like a shape. So therefore, it is an appropriate linear model. And that's all the questions asked me to do. So that's all I need to do as well is interpret the residual plot once I've developed it. Well, that's all we have time for today in this video. In our next video, we're going to solve some complex problems using linear regression. So we're going to dig out some of those past exams from Western Australia and also some mock and public exams in Queensland. And we're going to solve those on the video. So do stay tuned for that one. And the best way to stay tuned is to hit that notification button on your YouTube channel so that you get notifications whenever new videos are released. You can also follow me now on McClutchy Maths and then we have little tips and tricks and giveaways there.